Hey, it's Jag, and today we're going to finish the double mystery pedal build. In the last video, uh, I populated the boards and soldered all the components onto these uh, two uh, mystery pedals. Um, today, we're going to install the offboard components, uh, wire the connections to them, uh, install the ICs, and finalize everything and get these pedals completed. So where I left off on mystery pedal board one, uh, well, I left off at the same place on both of them. The next thing to do on there is uh, install the uh, the battery snap. Uh, on the um, the PC board, uh, there is uh, there are two holes drilled that you you bring the uh, wires for the battery snap in up from the bottom, and then you loop them over into the actual pads that you're soldering to. So uh, you just want to make sure you uh, you um, thread your uh, negative and positive wires through the correct holes. Uh, red is always positive, black is always negative. At least that's the standard. So just thread those up through the two holes in the board and then down into uh, their respective pads. You can solder them on the top or on the bottom. Um, I like to do it on the bottom whenever I can. The reason is uh, when you solder them on the top, uh, you can end up uh, melting or singeing the uh, the insulation cover on the wire. That's not the end of the world as long as the wire doesn't short to anything. It just doesn't look that good. So I generally try and do it on the bottom. When you flip the board over, you want to make sure that the wires are still coming through the holes that nothing fell back through. And if you have a, a little bit of a, a nub of wire sticking through you always want to kind of trim those you don't want wires sticking out that could short on something else that's the battery snap installed uh, just check that the wires are in there tight and then finish twisting the uh, the battery connector uh, next we need to cut five wires for the in out ring and two grounds uh, to connect to uh, offboard components so those uh, wires will go in Here's the input pad here. Uh, here's ring here. Here is out. And then these are the two grounds. So I always twist the, uh, the, the stranded wires before I tin them just to make sure I get a, a good straight wire to uh, solder. And I'm going to solder those from the top. Easier to do, and there's no components around them, so I'm not really in risk of singeing or burning anything. That's those wires uh, soldered to the board. I'm going to flip it over, and we're going to cut the extra tails. Uh, you can do this all at the end if you want. Um, I just find it easier to do as I'm finishing each step uh, because I'm aware of where all of the uh, wires would be sticking out. Don't trim too close to the pads. I have uh, seen in the past where people have trimmed those really close and they actually cut the pad. Uh, and Sometimes that leaves an intermittent connection so you don't even know right away that there's a problem. Other times the pedal just doesn't work because you've cut right through a pad and broken the circuit. I usually start by doing those finger tight because it's uh, it can be a lot easier to um, turn the um, the component, uh, twist the component to make it easier to get to um, the uh, lugs you need to solder on um, and then once you're all done you can just uh, put it in the orientation you need and tighten it up. Okay so now we're going to uh, install the pots and the LED. They go in from the bottom side of the board and uh, you don't solder them just yet. You put them in place uh, through their pads and then we're going to put it into the um, into the enclosure and, and again uh, put the uh, nuts and washers on finger tight and then we uh, turn the enclosure over and we need to raise the board uh, up a little bit so nothing is pushing against the uh, or touching against the case of the pot and shorting. In this one, there's a uh, uh, there's a 10k pot and uh, a one meg pot. So you got to make sure you get your pots in the right uh, uh, the right uh, 
pads as well. And we're also going to put the LED in. I have the LED right here. Uh, the LED has one lead. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But it has one lead that's a little longer. That's the lead that goes into the square solder hole on, on, the, on the board. We guide these components into their holes on the other side of the enclosure. This can be really frustrating to do. Be patient, take your time, don't let the frustration get to you. Um, and sometimes it goes really easy. Finger tighten these um, nuts on the pots. And hopefully they're still in the board on the other side. Sometimes you find you've screwed these in and the board has come off on the other side. So We've got the board mounted the LED or the uh, pots are on the other side the LED oh has just fallen into its hole exactly where it needs to go you need to raise uh, the board up a, a couple of millimeters what I sometimes do is I have various sizes of, of rubber grommets and I will try and uh, use the grommets kind of like a standoff uh, while I'm soldering um, or some other thing I can put under there. Uh, none of these uh, grommets are actually thick enough. I had some, some small plastic standoffs that there were, were the right height to lift the board uh, off, but on the opposite end I couldn't really put anything. You can kind of rely on, on friction to keep that board from sinking back down onto, uh, the, um, onto the pots, and when you're happy with... Uh, how high you've got everything sitting. Uh, you just go in there with your solder and solder it in and the board should stay in place after that. Okay that's the pot soldered. Um, I haven't soldered the LED yet. Uh, just going to look and make sure one final check that I've got the LED in the right way around. Uh, again uh, LED, a diode. Diodes, uh, electrolytic capacitors, and transistors are the things that are most commonly put in the wrong way around. See, I always double check those things and triple check those things before I solder them and cut the leads. The board looks like it's sitting up high enough. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to solder that LED in place. Okay, so we can clip our extra leads. The next thing to do is to solder the, uh, the DC adapter jack. So we'll need to cut three wires um, to uh, connect the, um, the DC adapter jack. And one thing that can often happen, as has happened here, uh, you, go to sh you go to strip the wires and, and it pulls all the wires out of the jacket. So I'm going to have to cut another one here. One of the ways you can stop that from happening is to bend your wire at a little bit of a right angle and hold it there while you're stripping uh, the end off. We are going to solder the negative wire from the negative terminal on the adapter jack to the negative pad on the PC board right here. Uh, we will solder the sleeve uh, from, this, um, from this lug to the rightmost uh, positive uh, pad and then the DC disconnect uh, wire from this middle tab to the middle pad here. So now that I've got those wires soldered on there I'm just going to tighten up the uh, uh, I'm just going to tighten up the uh, adapter jack. Uh, you don't want to tighten these too tight they are a plastic body so you can strip it pretty easily so I don't know how clearly you can see this, but uh, when you solder those wires uh, on, as you can see, they, they curve around uh, onto the pads. And sometimes when you're soldering, uh, the uh, insulation can uh, heat up, melt, and pop off. So that is why you want to uh, try to get your soldering iron on and off those pads as quick as possible. You also want to keep an eye uh, to see if... Uh, you are melting uh, the insulating jacket on any wires. Again, if it's not shorting against anything, uh, it's not a problem. Um, it just doesn't look so good. So we're going to move on to, to wiring the uh, switch. So this pedal is true bypass. When you're soldering the, the leads on the switch, one thing you need to do is make sure that you orient 
the tabs so that they go uh, horizontally across the, uh, the, the enclosure as opposed to uh, vertically. So when you're putting them in the enclosure, you want all of the tabs to be lined up going this way. There's two ways you can orient that switch. It doesn't matter. You can do it uh, this way or 180 degrees. So uh, another thing that we're going to do before we put the switch in is we're going to uh, um, install the wires on the switch. So uh, this would be um, tab one. This would be tab two here. This would be tab three here. Then tab four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We need to make a jumper to go between tab three and six. There is our little uh, U-shaped jumper. There's our little jumper. The other uh, tricky thing on, uh, on this uh, foot switch is there is a wire that will connect uh, pin uh, 4 to pin or a, a jumper from pin 4 to pin 9 but then also goes off the switch to the board. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut an extra long piece of wire and strip it extra long and we're going to connect uh, that wire, that extra stripped wire from pin 4 to pin 9 here being careful not to touch either of these uh, pins uh, pin 5 and pin 8 as it goes through and then the wire will come off this side and goes off to the uh, PC board. So there we have our uh, jumper from pin 3 to pin 6 and we have the wire and the additional jumper from pin uh, 4 to pin 9. Now we're going to solder the wires to the remaining pins. Alright so we've got the wires soldered to pins 1, 2, uh, four, five, seven, and an eight. Uh, we're ready to install the switch into the enclosure and then we'll wire it to the board. There's the foot switch installed into the board and the wires just go into these numbered pads across, uh, across here. So two, one, five, and then four, seven, and eight. Okay, well that's the foot switch wired in. I think we're pretty, pretty close to done. Uh, we just need to uh, wire in the jacks now. Um, I'm doing that a little bit out of order um, just because the jacks can be the most frustrating part to do. Uh, the input jack on this pedal is a stereo jack. Uh, this isn't a stereo pedal. Uh, it's just uh, you can use a stereo jack uh, to do some switching as you plug things in and out. This is how your pedals turn off and on when you plug your input in. Just like a switch. So uh, the stereo jack goes on the input side and the mono jack goes on the output side. There's generally uh, two washers uh, on, on these jacks. There'll be one that's just a straight flat washer and one that's a serrated washer. The serrated washer is meant to go on the inside of the enclosure. Uh, the flat washer is meant to go on the outside. On the board, and you, you probably won't be able to see it here, um, but these wires coming off are labeled. So this, this wire here is out. This is a ground wire. This is uh, wire, oops, sorry, this wire here is uh, labeled ring and uh, this is another ground and this wire is labeled in. So in and ring are, are for the input jack um, and uh, they go on, as I said, that stereo jack. So uh, the one on the board labeled for ring, this one right here, will go to uh, this connection which is uh, the ring connection. Uh, the uh, one labeled input which is this wire here uh, will go to tip, the tip connection on, uh, on this jack which is uh, this uh, lug here. This is the ground lug um, and that will connect to uh, the uh, that should con that will connect to one of these two grounds. I'm I'm assuming this ground. It's not really clear on the instructions, but it doesn't matter. And then on the output um, jack, we just have the output wire, which will wire to this tab, which is tip, and uh, this ground wire will go to 
uh, this tab, which is, is the ground of the jack. It's a really good idea whenever you can to, to pre-tin these bigger lugs. They're quite large and they can act uh, as a heat sink uh, and stop your uh, solder from making a good connection. So if you pre-tin them, uh, the solder will just, uh, the heat will dissipate more or will uh, spread more evenly on the pins and uh, your solder will melt easier. So my camera got hot and I had to turn it off. So while that was off, I finished wiring uh, the jacks on the enclosure. Uh, you can see here, they're uh, all wired in. So we've got uh, the one labeled out going to tip of the output um, jack. And this ground is going to ground. Uh, the one labeled ring is going to ring on the input jack. Again, a ground is going to the ground tab. And then to the tip, we have the input uh, wire. The only thing left to do now is to put the IC in. And that's a really quick and easy thing to do. I don't know if you can see this very well. I'll try and show it as clearly as I can. The IC has a, a little notch on the top, on one end. That notch on the IC lines up in the IC socket with a little notch it's at the top of the socket here I don't know if you can see that but you just want to make sure you orient uh, the IC uh, the correct way uh, for the circuit uh, if you put it in backwards it's not gonna work and be gentle pushing these in one of the worst things you can do is force this and have your your IC pins all all bend um, sometimes the, the pins don't fit in the socket too well. Like I said, you want to be careful about touching the leads on the IC. If you have a static discharge or something, you could uh, damage the IC, uh, but you just touch something and make sure you ground yourself out because sometimes you have to bend these pins in a little bit. How I do that is I put it on the table and then just put a little bit of light pressure uh, on the pins, and I do that on both sides. Don't try and bend them exactly right the first time. Go a little bit, uh, just till you get the, the pins so they'll fit in the socket properly. If you've never done this before, it's not a bad idea, if you can, to maybe get a, a, a an IC out of an old pedal that doesn't work or something and just practice installing it in, in the socket. And a little gentle pressure and the IC should just uh, pop right in. You want to support the bottom of the uh, or you want to support the PC board so you don't push the PC board back down on either the case or um, uh, the uh, the pots or anything else metal underneath and you could short something um, you can recover from that but uh, I can't tell you how many times I uh, have seen people have problems with pedals when all that was happening was the board was pushed against the component and shorting a couple leads together so that is uh, the whole inside of this project done and ready to go. I'm going to uh, put the uh, knobs on and, and the bottom panel, and then we're going to get on to the, uh, the number two mystery pedal build. When you're screwing on the knobs on these uh, pots, don't uh, don't tighten them too tight. The the set screw in the knobs. There's there's a set screw in there. Uh, they are made out of brass and they're quite soft. And you can break them off if you uh, put too much pressure on. So you you just want to put enough. Um, you just want to screw those on tight enough that they're snug and the the knobs don't pull off. So that's mystery pedal uh, number one uh, built. We'll get on to completing mystery pedal number two uh, in a few seconds here. On the other pedal, the, uh, the, the potentiometers went over the board and couldn't really short much out. Uh, these ones, if you'll note, they, they sit right over the, uh, the solder side of the board and right down against uh, the solder joints. So it's going to be very important to make sure that we get this, uh, this PC board up off of those pots when we put it in the enclosure.
Okay, so that's the LED and control pot soldered in there. That is probably the most uh, nerve-wracking part of the build. So wiring up to the board uh, is actually quite a bit um, easier and less involved in this pedal than it was in the other pedal. And that's because a lot of the connections to the uh, for the uh, DC jack socket and the input output jacks and the foot switch are actually done on lugs of the various jacks and not right to the board. So these six wires coming off the board here uh, are the only wires that connect into the board. So uh, right now it's a bunch of mounting the parts and then we'll be soldering. The positive of the battery jack goes to uh, this middle tab here and then there will also be a wire uh, going uh, coming off the board. The wire labeled positive on the board will go to uh, this tab right here and then uh, there will be a uh, wire going from this tab to um, the ground connection on this tab and as well that is where uh, the uh, negative connection of the battery will connect. Okay that's the DC uh, adapter jack soldered in and part of the input jack uh, ready to go. Uh, we'll just get on to uh, the next Part, which is going to be the foot switch. Well, I took a little break. My cards were getting full, so I downloaded the footage to my computer. And while that was going on, uh, I installed the foot switch into uh, the enclosure. Uh, we're ready to solder the connections to the foot switch, uh, two more wires to add, and then we are done with this one. Well, we have to install the ICs too, but we're on the home stretch. Well, that's all the soldering done. The uh, PC board is all connected. Uh, hopefully we made no mistakes and this pedal is going to work first try. Um, I have installed the knobs and everything else. Uh, the last thing we have to do is put the ICs in. Okay, sometimes this the ICs don't have a, a little notch in the top. They'll have a dot up by the upper left leg. That's uh, the same direction as the notch. So you want to put that dot in the upper light, left leg uh, up at the top where the notch in the IC socket is. So, of course, getting them assembled and everything soldered together doesn't mean they actually work. I will test them later. It's getting a little late right now, so I don't, don't really have time to check them uh, right now. But I'll check them and make sure they're okay. If there's any issues, I'll, uh, I'll uh, do a little film of that or at least uh, explain to you what I found. Um, I didn't run into any problems. Uh, I think everything is wired up right, so they'll probably fire right up. Um, so that is the completion of the building of the double mystery petals. Uh, still not telling you what they are. Um, I will test them and uh, then film uh, some, some playing and a demonstration of them. So uh, thanks for, for watching this little mini series, this little two part. Um, if you enjoyed this or found it educational or entertaining, please like and subscribe. Um, please comment. Uh, all those things help get my videos uh, more noticed and they, I'd like to grow the channel a bit. Um, as always, uh, the, the, the links to my band One Soul Thrust are in, in the description below. I will put a link to uh, Build Your Own Clone Pedals. Uh, check them out. These kits are, are really awesome. They're, they're really well done. Uh, they're really easy to build. Uh, the second of these pedals was a bit more complex than the first. Both of them fall into the easy to build category. I didn't unfortunately film the painting of the uh, um, 
of the enclosures. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. All the links are below as usual. We'll see you in the next video.